Welcome to Jaren. Hey Jaren, it's so it's it's so good to have you here. We're really really. He loves to chat. He does. It's his favorite activity. I can understand how it's his favorite. You know what? What? I've been a little bit bored lately because I haven't been able to do a lot of my, a lot of my, a lot of your favorite activities. Yeah. So I just wish that there was a way that I could bust my boredom. Um, well, since you've got a lot to say. Yes. Do you know where the bucket of boredom busters is hiding this week? Yes, we do know where it's hiding. Oh, maybe you could show us. Sure. Uh, maybe if I get the chatterbox to say bucket of boredom busters. Yep. All right, hang on. Here we go. Ah. Uh, I think he's ready. Okay, okay. let's try. Uh, bucket of boredom busters! Ah, it worked! Oh, awesome! Are you magic? Well done, Mr. Chatterbox. He's pretty, what... he's pretty amped about it. He's very vocal. He is very vocal. Very vocal. Loves the chat. I don't know if you know someone at home that's very vocal as well. I don't know anyone on J Rev Land who likes to chat very much. Well, shall we see what's inside the boredom buster this week? Sure. Can he, like, yeah. get him to Go for it. And he can assist me. Uh, I feel like he's Cheating. hindering more than helping, but that's fine. That's all part of the fun, isn't yeah. it? Um, make a chatterbox. Awesome! Let's go do that. Yeah! <laughs> Alright, Jared, we are going to make a chatterbox. So all you'll need to do is get yourself some paper, something to draw with or write with, and some scissors. So, we take our piece of paper, and we're going to make one big fold, put a triangle across there, okay? So make sure that the point is nice and pointy here, and that this edge lines up nice. So make a crease along there. Excellent. Now we're going to take our scissors, and we're going to carefully cut along the edge. Now you might need a grown-up's help for this. Doesn't matter if it's not super neat, but it does it does help with the folding process. So we're gonna open that up and we've got a nice square now. So we made a triangle one way. Now we open it up and we need to make a triangle in the opposite direction. So we need to make the two corners meet like that. And we'll put one big crease down the middle there. Now we open it up. Now, we need to make four little triangles. All right, so once you've done that, flip it over. And we just do the same thing again. Excellent. Now, you need to fold it in half. Both ways I find it helps. And then, here's the tricky part. There's these little flaps here on the underside of the thing that we just folded. So we need to pinch in there and fold it together. Ta-da! Now, in the past, I have made puppets out of these, which are really cool too. You just have to stick these parts together and it makes kind of a lizard. But what we are going to do is make these encouragement chatterboxes. Now, we need to take our textures. I'm going to put some numbers on the outside because part of the fun of chatterboxes is that you get to randomly select things by choosing numbers and opening and closing the amount of that number. So we're going to do a one, two, three, four on the outside, and then we're going to do some more filling on the inside. So let's do that. And use red. I'll put. It helps sometimes if you flatten it out a little bit as you go. So I'm going to put a big number one.
So the idea is if someone chooses two, you go one, two. Now we're going to put some numbers on the inside here that you can choose from. Excellent. All right. So now we've got all our numbers in there. We're going to fill the insides of these. Now, if I was clever, I would flatten it out like this and written the numbers like that. But that's okay. So, what you're going to do is open up these triangles with the numbers inside, and you're going to write nice things under each of the numbers. So here, I'm going to say, you are fun. So then you can go around and you can ask people to choose a number and they might say one and you open up and you say two and they might choose one. So then you can flip it open and it says, I love you. And you can draw things in there as well if you want. If, if maybe you struggle with writing, that's totally fine. And you can decorate it and make it all really pretty all different drawings and patterns over the top. It'd be really nice. So go have some fun. Hey, that was cool. Yeah, I had like, so much fun. Yeah, I haven't made them since I was like in primary school. I know. Only a couple of years ago. Just a few. Yep. Yep. Um, Jareth, what have you been doing this week? Have you got something that you would like to share with us? Yeah, I hope so. Something creative or something like really fun? Mm. I would love to see it. Do you think that you might be able to send it in to our Jareb Letterbox? I love the Letterbox. It's one of my favourite things. Me I get to too. hear from you all. Me too. I wonder what all of our friends have been doing on their weekends. Yeah. Um, but Sarah, where could they send all the things that they've been doing on the weekends and during the week? Where could they uh, send like to the email address. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it's um, uh, it's just um, uh, here. <sighs> oh. Did you eat salami? <sighs> yes. Oh. Well, get a grown-up to help you send whatever you've been doing to this address, and we can show it in the gallery. You know who really likes salami? Who? Kaylee. Kaylee? And Cabana. Ah, excellent. I like cheese. Mm, me too. Mm. It well, doesn't like me back, though. Okay. Well, right. maybe we could uh, go and see what you've been doing in the gallery. Shall we go? Yeah, let's go. On one, two, three. Let's, let's all go, go to the gallery. Um... Hey guys, my name is Alex and I'm building a robot for J-Web. This robot, look how cool this robot is. We all fit together and we all love each other and sometimes we can't see each other because sometimes we might need a dirty stuff. Bye J-Web, we love you and we miss you. What is encouragement? Is that something that you can smell? Um, encouragement? Uh, yeah, uh, I saw that on a billboard once. Uh, ah! But you know what I was doing? I was driving, see? I was driving and I saw the billboard that said encouragement and then I went to McDonald's and I had a muffin. That's what you get when you eat too quickly. That's good. Hey Ray, um, do you know what this encouragement business is? Yeah, um, I think that you will find that that has something to do with um, property law. Well, then, did you, can you see that, um, I've got this new watch? Are you gonna see, I'm not wearing it right now, but I've got a watch and it's got buttons on it. If you press them, they make noises and they tell you the time and they tell you the weather and they tell you the date and they tell you the, the weather and they tell you the time. It is really good! Right, okay, thank you for clearing that up. You're most welcome. 
Come to me with any property law issues and I'll set you right. Yes. Yeah, I got encouragement once. Um, it was on sale, uh, two for one at the supermarket. It was on the end aisle. And I thought, yep, I'm going to get two of them for the price of one. Encouragement. So this one guy, he, he was just swimming around and he thought, Oh, nothing's going to go. And then, guess what? You know what happened? Yeah, what happened? I ate him! Ah! <laughs> it's toasted bad, though. Oh, yeah, you get that sometimes. Yeah, you do! Yes, hello and welcome to those of you who have just tuned in to another round of Battle Robots. You join us as we see crowd favourites Red and Blue return in a grudge match. Let's cross there now. We begin the round with the world famous Cup on Head Fight, where the robots will of course be blinded by cups but still expected to fight. Let's see how they go. Oh, and Blue has made contact with the wall. He has been deducted five points for that misstep. Let's see if he can recover. Red not making much progress either. They're dancing around each other. Oh, and Red has been awarded points for his pirouette skills. Here we are in the Escape the Blanket round, where both robots are trying to escape from the giant blanket. Let's see if either are successful. Oh, we see some movement there out of the bottom corner. Is that a red foot? Yes, it is a red foot, followed by a red knee and a red arm. It looks like Red will be taking home the points for this round. Blue is hopelessly stuck. Red obviously outmaneuvering blue this round and he's gained points for that well done red and here we are at the pillow fighting round each of the robots need to use the pillow to fight each other but it looks like they're fighting the pillow and yes they've been deducted points for misinterpreting the point of the game it looks like blue is maybe working it out but red is still hopelessly lost blue coming in for the attack he sucker punch from the side oh and he's knocked red's head off See the slow motion replay where it all happens. Both of them very close to the edge. And now, of course, we cross to the barnyard where robots are expected to not only herd animals into their rightful pens, but also fight each other. Blue's doing a great job at defense. Red is not sure what to do. I believe he's going for, yes, he's gone for the horse, but he's knocked it over. He's going for the Dalmatian now. Blue still shuffling the cow in, both still fighting. Let's see if anything's going to eventuate from this. Both doing some fancy footwork, but neither landing any blows. There's still, oh, it looks like Red has gone in for an attack. Let's see what happens. Oh, and he's knocked Blue's head off. Red has pulled back in front of Blue, snatching victory from the jaws of defeat. He has taken the points, he's taken the round, and he's edging ever closer to the Battle Robots Championship Trophy. Tune in next week as we battle more robots. I want to tie my shoes. I can't tie my shoes. I am terrible at everything. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Time out. This robot looks like he's got his wires a little bit crossed. You know what time it is? Reset time. I should just try again. I could be better. Yay! I can tie my shoes! Huh? He is not good at sports. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa! Time out! This robot needs to hit the reset button. Reset! He is good at other things. Like drawing! What? I want to see a dog ride a motorbike. You, dog, ride a motorbike. Ha ha ha! He cannot ride a motorbike. He is not very good. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Time out!
This robot has a better purpose. I think it's time this robot hit the reset. I suppose dogs are good at other things. You, dog, sit. He is a good boy! Good boy. Do you ever have trouble with your words? This is a big one for me. I need help with this one all the time because I speak before I think pretty much every day. Now, luckily, most of what I say is okay, but unfortunately, sometimes my words hurt other people. Sometimes my words even hurt myself. Our words have enormous power. They can make people feel great about themselves or they can make people feel awful about themselves. Our words are kind of just a reflection of what's going on in our brain and in our heart. So if we are like not thinking great things, bleh, yuck words are going to come out. If we're not feeling good things towards other people, bleh, gross yuck words are going to come out too. You know what else? If other people have said yuck words about us and we've let it get into our brain or into our heart and our thinking and our feelings, then probably yuck words are going to come out of our mouth too. Okay, enough with the yuck stuff. You want to know the good stuff? God can rewire our thinking and our feelings so that our words sound a lot more like Jesus. Our words can be awesome. Our words can make other people feel great and build them up. And we can even say nice things to ourselves about ourselves. Like, I'm pretty clever. I'm really cool. I'm awesome. Like we've been learning about, the Holy Spirit can help change our thinking. And when we change our thinking, it changes our words. And our words are pretty powerful, so we need to be careful with them. Our words are a lot like toothpaste. Once you squeeze out the toothpaste, you can't get it back in the tube. Once they're out there, we can't get them back. We can't make them disappear. They already happened. So there's a few things that we can do. One really good piece of advice is if you can't say something nice, Maybe don't say it at all. Be quick to apologize. That's one that I have to keep learning because sometimes my words do just bleh out of me before I even realize and I need to say sorry to those people and do it quickly. Everyone makes mistakes. We're not going to get this stuff perfect every time but the more time that we spend with Jesus and the more that we hear his words about us, it definitely changes our words. He says that you are loved. He says that you are special. God even says that you were fearfully and wonderfully made. They're pretty cool words to hear about yourself. I wonder how different the world would be if we used amazing nice words like that. Being encouraging is using our words to cheer other people up and to cheer them on. Instead of being mean with our words, God helps us to be encouraging. Today's verse has a really hard word to say and I struggle with it. So let's try it together. Okay, it's from 1 Thessalonians 5, 11. So encourage each other and build each other up just as you are already doing. Let's do it one more time. Here's that tricky word again. 1 Thessalonians 5.11. So encourage each other and build each other up just as you are already doing. Let's pray and ask God to keep rewiring our brain so that our words sound like love. Let's pray. God, we thank you that you speak words of life over us all the time and that your word tells us how much you love us and that your Holy Spirit helps us hear and feel how big your love is for us. 
So we pray that you would continue to rewire our thinking so that when we think about what we want to say, we sound a lot like you. In your name we pray. Amen. Hey, j guess what time it is? It's our weekly challenge. So this week, we're going to do a high five. <gasps> nope. Wrong. A word high five. Oh, that's different. So instead of encouraging each other with high fives like that, we want you to use your words. Oh, that's very good social distancing. Mm. So I want you to think really hard about five people in your world that you can give a word high five to. Like, um, you have nice glasses. Mm, that is a nice thing to say to someone, but I want you to think really hard about something that's really special about that person. Your beard is slightly orange. That is an observation as opposed to a encouragement. I appreciate the observation. You have nice small ears. Wrong. Uh, I think you're almost getting it. How about I think the way that you tried that new thing was really brave. Ah, so something about like what they do or like mm. their character almost, right? Yeah, absolutely. So think about the people in your world, think about some of the things that they do, some of the things that make them special and tell them how much you love them about those things. We could even like say to our teacher like, good job, you work really hard to take good care of me. That's a really good point. Mm. Mm. All right. Well. I've got some people to go and encourage. Me so. too. I'm just going to go and encourage other people as well. So you better go and encourage people with giving them word high fives. And okay. we'll see you next week, okay? Bye. 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 -bye. I'm, I'm, I'm going to go yeah, this way. Yeah, I'm going this way.